Guys, I have a. I'm on a call. What is? <laughs> That's Louie. I don't know what is. Hi, Wolfie. Um, it's like a it's special called Baskets interface. of Fun. It's, it's a show talking about baskets. Do you want to hear it? No. Okay. Anyway. Okay, let me get back to the question. I heard about baskets because Zach and I were working on a show, and one day he says, well, what if the main character's name is Chip Baskets? And I said, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. And then it, as the show got developed around this character, it was obvious that the name of the show was going to have to be Baskets, which seems like a very strange name. Yeah. But it just couldn't be anything else. And it's, you know. Yeah, even, now in, in retrospect, it, 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 yeah. And so you were working on a, a FX connected you with uh, Zach, or you connected with Louis, or? No, Zach called me about it because we had worked together in the past. So he said, I'm going to do a show. I want you to help me make it. So I said, great. I mean, that's a good yeah. call. Great. That was yeah. fun. Yeah. yeah, that's a great call. Man, I got a call. Yeah, you got you a similar. I called the call to me. Yes. Very memorable. Yeah. And you very... were there when they made the call, am I right? Yeah, because it happened very fast. Of, you know, as 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 the character um came about, um <laughs> <laughs> we got some hack comedy. Um Zach kept saying, I kept love talk, it. Zach kept talking the mother of Chip Baskets, kind of like this, you know, Chip. And Louis C.K. at the time said, well, that's Louis Anderson. But the voice you're doing is Louis Anderson. Can we just have him play the mom? <laughs> and we, I remember Zach started laughing. So it was a very quick call. Yeah, and then Louis, I remember he called, I think, Dave Becky and said, can you get me Louis Anderson's number? And in the moments, uh, I heard him say, Louie, this is Louie. Would, would you be interested in playing Zach Galifianakis' mother? And he said, yes. And that's it. <laughs> and then it was a time. That's it, really, right? Yeah, it was like a crazy idea yeah. that was solidified within about two minutes. So right. there was no going back. And then, But it was only good from there. And then you showed up and Christine was born that moment. So. And then we did, uh, yeah, Christine was born in that first scene, don't you think? Mm -hmm. I mean, I wasn't exactly sure how I would play it, mm -hmm. but because we had all those pastries around <laughs> and we we used to go to the day old Wonder Bread store <laughs> and my, that was the one time we could have like cinnamon rolls and uh -huh. muffins and, you know, it was just that one time because they were like 50 cents because they were day old, you know, they would normally throw it out. And so when I saw all that in front of me, I thought, how would my mom uh, react to this? Mm -hmm. And yeah, uh, I remember we, I, we had those, Cos I, we had those Costco muffins yes. that come with the shrink wrap and the cardboard. Yeah. <laughs> and then I think I came up to you before that we started the thing and said, Hey, um, hey, Jonathan, what? Uh, I'm not going to change my voice. Yes, that was. And you said, and you were just like, okay, it was mm -hmm. really simple. And then we just shot that one scene. Yeah, and we shot a lot of stuff on that one scene. And I remember I said to you, well, for this, because we were doing so much stuff. You know, we had tons and tons of um, different. Uh, hold on one second. Okay. This is working at home. Yeah, so we shot on that first day just tons and tons of stuff, just finding Christine. And there was just, all of it was great. There was stuff about buying ceiling fans at Costco and the muffins. and Yes. I, I said, I think. You know, if you need a ceiling fan, I have a ton of them in the garage. Yeah. <laughs> there was a big sale on them. Yeah. And I just tried to be my mom. You know, she was so excited to show you a deal that she got somewhere. Yeah, yeah. I love and that. And so excited about, you know, a mango, whatever it was. Yeah, the drinks. Man <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and then we did that. I dr- tried to drink that drink, and and I did a spit take, and I tried to save the scene. And luckily, yeah, yeah. we saved the scene. I mean, yeah. I don't know if I did. You probably saved it. But well, I, I just, just remember. It hit the spot, I think I said. Yeah, I just remember thinking, we got to use that choking on the drink. Let's not yeah. lose that because it was so funny. And so just, you know, because we lost it. I remember L- Louie was standing right next to me. And he's just sort of laughing uncontrollably. And when I said, no, we should use that, he was like, wow, you can do that? I'm like, yeah. We, <laughs> we try to use all the mistakes. Yeah. I love them. That's what the um, whole show was, wasn't it? Yeah. All <laughs> beautiful mistakes, you could call them. Yeah. Because they were so real. Because your whole thing about using Costco was you wanted real products. That was the real intent. Am I right, Jonathan? Definitely. I mean, I love um, Kirkland and Costco and the, the, the pride in the bargain, like you're saying. I just love that. Yeah. That's such such an American thing, the pride in the bargain. How long did it take you to write this script? The pilot. That's a good question because it kind of meandered around for a while. It was really like an outline and Zach had a lot of ideas and I had a lot of ideas. And then really, I can't remember how long it was, but there was a lot of discussions between the three of us over and over. What kind of show would this be? And um, so there was a lot of different ideas. Like at one point, there was like a Zach had like an our chip had like an ex-wife who had a new husband who had was a war veteran and there's so many different things but <laughs> we always knew it was going to be the clown um and his family so when did the Paris when did the Paris thing come into your mind well that was really a Louis CK idea that um helped it just have that poetry to it, you know? Yeah. It was that sort of two two things of the Bakersfield life, the Costco life, and the European fantasy life, like pulling again. You know, like, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, that's like it. For that, yeah. The Theater de la Jeune Lune was a, cl- a thing in Minnesota, which were all French clowns, and they came over. And I was a ringmaster in one of the circuses. Uh, of their performance, and they, I got a review that said Louis Anderson delivered his line like he was hailing a cab, <laughs> and uh, which I, I said, well, yes, they, you need to get people's attention. Um, but anyways, so that, and then, uh, you know, Jerry Lewis in my lifetime, the French love Jerry Lewis. They mm-hmm. loved his slapstick. They loved his clown stuff, and so that would play with the French and loving the clowns. And, you know, I wonder if it's with Louis, it was tied back. I'm going to talk to Louis, I hope. I wonder if it was tied back to that. I wonder if that somehow played in his mind. But we do know that some of the most beautiful clowns are there in France, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. And I think it's also thinking about Zach. I mean, he's such a clown. He's such mm-hmm. a goofball, and he's done so many funny performances and movies and TV and his stand-up. But as we know him, he's a soft, you know, he's a gentle soul who is truly an artist. So I think this was kind of like a bigger, splashier version of who he really is inside, is that he's right. he is this kind of artist who's, you know, in a commercial medium, but... Um, he, you know, has sort of a conflicted relationship with like the success that he's had and the fans that he's gotten. And I think so this was just a good way to explore and utilize his talents. Obviously he's a master of slapstick and he's a master of jokes and he's a good act. He's a really good dramatic actor. So this character is like sort of looking at him, like what, how can we pull out the best of him? Well, um, how did the Dale? How did the Dale character split off from him then? Well, was it always going to be twins. It was always going to be twins because you know he has, in his act over the years, has done twins. He did right, right. Beth Galifianakis, like this, sort of like his roots growing up in uh, North Carolina, 
those are kind of like Dale is kind of like his friends growing up. Right. So he com comes from that world. Doesn't make any right. sense why Dale has this accent like he does, but it's just a character that he has done over the years and is funny, super funny. So we shot the pilot in that house in Silmar, I think it was, right? Mm -hmm. And then we waited, was it six months? I think it was a year. A year. And were we always waiting? Were we always, always waiting? Uh, were, we, were you nervous or whatever that thing is for yourself, anxious? Are we going to do this or not? Was it one of those things? Or when are we going to do it? Do you remember that? Um, yeah, I can't, it, it wasn't very long before we know we're doing this, but there was, uh -huh. I can't remember. Exactly. Fitting it in. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it was fitting it in or yeah, it just, but it just. Or Zach's movie. Maybe Zach was doing a movie. That's that. I think that might've been it. Was. That's what it was. He yeah. had that movie yeah. keeping up with the Joneses and yeah. Yes. That's right. I remember that. <clears throat> and then the first season we wrote in we airbnb a little house near his house in venice wow. and it was really nice you came there one time i remember i don't yeah. know if you it. it was real white and like we had pizza that is so or was that a different time i don't remember what we ate but um we probably did have pizza. all the writers weren't all the writers there yeah yeah we had pizza I, I, I don't think i could have pizza i was really trying not to eat pizza at that time yeah, there's a great pizza place right nearby. That's right. Yeah. Um, and we were so excited yeah. to have you. And we're like, well, let's see if Louis, uh, we'll see if he likes anything. I just remember, you know, because we hadn't seen you in a while. And you're writing right. stories for Christine Baskets. You're like, well, how? And you started just going off on different things. And we were just crying, laughing. And you know we're just writing everything down that you're saying, riffing off of our ideas, and so then it, a lot of that goes right into the script. Just and we had so much fun. And the great thing is, I was talking about my mom a lot of times and my experiences, mm -hmm. but what you did was an upside down cake on a lot of them, which was perfect mm -hmm. because you know that's what makes it great. Because then it's I don't know fits better with what you're doing. So because mm -hmm. mine's always going to be from my perspective. And then it turned out truly from the character's perspective without mm -hmm. us, without me having to, I, I didn't have the ability to do that, but I knew the stories had gold in them on some mm -hmm. level or something in them. Mm -hmm. I guess something in them, you know? I think my mom always had some ulterior motive. Uh, she had a, she had a, a handkerchief full of gems and she would mm -hmm. reluctantly share them with you. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in a sense, in a sense, she's always, she was always saying, look how beautiful that bunt cake is. Have you ever seen a more <laughs> beautiful bunt cake, Louie? Yeah. And I go, I don't know. I've yeah, never a kid, you know. looked at a bunt cake. What are you talking about? You're a bunt cake, mother. Yeah. <laughs> um, but thank God for her because she really did shape the character from my perspective anyways. And uh, it was so much fun. And then we started, and how did Martha come aboard? How did that happen? That was a, she was a Zach's friend from like their early days in stand up. And he said, I have a friend, Martha. She does not want to be on this show. She's very terrified of being on camera. And, you know, uh, I'm going to call her an Uber. She doesn't have a car, she lives with her parents. I'm going to call her an Uber and get her over to my house. And can you try to convince her? that it won't be that bad. Right. And so she came over and I said, you know, we'll make it real easy and fun and it won't be scary. And you did. Yeah, and then she, you know, but every, every day after the shoot, she would come up to me, do you want to fire me? <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, so good. I, I talked to her recently and mm -hmm. uh, have you seen the cast over at FX? The what one? they did was the oh. cast. Oh, the cast. I haven't seen it over yeah. there, but I know they have they, it. Yeah. They put it in a big bell jar, uh -huh. like an award. And That's put it Martha's cast. It's beautiful. Cool. Martha was really like thrilled to hear about that. Then almost <laughs> the number one question, uh, 
while Vasquez was going on is when is Martha getting her cast off or <laughs> how did she hurt herself? Right. And I right. would always go, I have no idea. I don't <laughs> even, I, I have no idea. Well, it really came from like, I used to work at this office in New York and there was this one woman and she always <laughs> had a cast on. She was just very frail or something. And I, when I was thinking about the character Martha, I'm like, she would have a cast. Just kind yeah. of injured, but yeah, yeah. So you know, you just and, it yeah, worked. It worked. It worked. So when you when that first scene, when she drives over the motorcycle, or the the first of all, the um, the moped was that a French moped or a British or something? Because I really got a sense that that for some reason was a French or foreign moped, but it's all yeah. in my head, I think. No, it was. I can't remember if it was a Vespa. I don't think it was a Vespa, but maybe. But it was a European. Yeah. Definitely. But anyway, so when she drove that over, mm -hmm. um, she did it perfectly, at least it appeared, on the first time. Yeah, she did. She did it perfectly. Yeah. She just slammed into it. No, she and was I, a great. She, she was a great stunt driver. We loved. She was always really interested in doing stunts and yeah. doing crazy driving. She really enjoyed it, so that was great. And the stunt guys, you know, like she was always excited to work with them, and it's yeah. it funny. And all the animals too. She loved so. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. How, how did you come up with the idea? of um, all the cats. Oh, oh, Dean's cats? Yeah. That was a really great scene. I think early on where I, I'm i with Martha and I'm showing her the cats. And there... I think, I, I'm pretty sure that... Oh, no, that must have been in the script. Well, must I must have been in the script. Yeah. Ronald Reagan, yeah. Yeah, I think... Once we zoned in on she loves Ronald Reagan, I mean, <laughs> that, that, that was a, you know, defining character trait, which meant yeah. she loved the sort of romance of that sort of conservatism where it wasn't, um, there weren't any victims in that conservative. Well, I mean, people didn't. I mean, Reagan, anybody but, would. I mean, they wouldn't. But I mean, it was never acknowledged by her. Oh, she right. Just, she never got past his hair, you know, or whatever it was. She never got past, you know. You know, I think Christina, I think she could see herself with those people on some mm -hmm. level, mm -hmm. you know, identifying with. Mm -hmm. Uh, the astronaut uh, Reagan, mm -hmm. you know, she she wanted to be famous on some level, I think, or well known or accepted. But that Ronald Reagan stuff, you know, that scene where they built the Reagan Library, I I was like mm -hmm. shocked because mm -hmm. I go, is this the real Reagan Library? I mean, and they shut it down for us. I was so naive, and uh, and I just go, oh my god, these guys did the most spectacular job when you yeah. walk in there yeah. Oh, yeah i was gonna say somewhere right here i have my report from fourth grade on ronald reagan which oh you do can you look for it and read it i don't know where it is all right well if you find it look for it, it's, hilarious. <laughs> it's hilarious and also wait, it might be right here. i can't find it but you know i'm oh, sorry because when I was in fourth grade, I was just like, everyone loves Ronald Reagan. I love him. He's like, a, he's our president. He's so cool. And and my friend and I learned how to draw Ronald Reagan because Mad Magazine would, would have him in every issue. And they had a very distinct style of drawing him that we would practice. The same way we learned to draw Garfield, we learned to draw the Mad Magazine Ronald Reagan. <laughs> so... When did you start getting Mad Magazine? When did you start reading that? I never got it. I would just read it. At oh, other you people. just read it. Other people had it. Yeah. But I did knew you find it funny? Did you know it was funny? Yeah. I don't know if I got it on the level that 
Yeah, that it was math. To get it, but it was definitely around like fifth grade, fourth grade. I yeah. love the thing in the back, you know, that you would fold and yeah, so cool. <clears throat> yeah, but anyway, so yeah, yeah there's, so, some, there's there's something about the show with the Bakersfield, which kind of has that um, Merle Haggard and Ronald Reagan had a ranch in Santa Barbara. And, you know, he was this kind of cowboy from the movies and part of um, Simi Valley is where his library yeah. is. All part of that same California um, kind of cowboy Western, but movie star Western, not real Western. And yeah, 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 yeah. Dusty, these dusty places that are kind of bleak and desert like, but, you know, they're. Uh, they had now they're just full of big parking lots with Costco's and big lots and that kind of thing. So I just I always growing up in California, especially with Huel Hauser, who we used a lot on baskets, who was this California's gold, the PBS show about like what does California have to offer? I always I just loved that world. And so Ronald Reagan just is like the epitome. He was the California governor. So you know, Christine's a California girl, as she says right. in, in one of those episodes. Um, so then to have like yeah. a, the, the season about the bullet train and California's trains, it just all felt like this. I think I even said you can take the, something out of California, but get, you can't take the California out of the girl. Yeah. Was that something like, oh, that? Something like that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so just to go back to... Um, the the um I was just talking to Alex Morris and mm -hmm. that scene outside the the library where he hugged me mm -hmm. that was like to me that was a fabulous thing for me because oh. I really I really got in touch with how that hug and what it signified and I loved it because I, I was really scared mixed up mm -hmm. excited exhilarated. It really, I just love that scene so much. I always I, like, I just want to hug that that scene. I know. That was a great scene. I, great. Yeah. I also love when we were sitting out in, uh, at the bus stop mm -hmm. of, the, of the Reagan thing with the bags of stuff and that. Mm -hmm. and I just loved all that. I remember I was like, you were looking at a Ronald Reagan bracelet. <laughs> yeah. It's like... That was great. But that woman who was uh, 90. Oh, right. Yeah, she passed away, uh, sadly. But mm -hmm. um, she was so sweet. And she yeah. was a little little hard of hearing. So when we mm -hmm. would shoot, she would just do her lines no matter yeah. what scene we were doing. I know. And you were so nice to everybody was. It was so sweet. I you know, love, that's why I thought. Yeah. Oh, I love, yeah. Old, I love older actors. There's just something super funny you know people are always like oh Cass, you got to get 20 somethings i'm like what about the 90 year olds we need the 90 year olds they're, <laughs> they're so funny well you know and you did it with martha's um you know martha's father mm -hmm. uh -huh. you know and he i got a really nice email or message mm -hmm. from from uh, the daughter yeah mm -hmm. uh, how we honored him in the mm -hmm. episode she really oh, yeah, loved yeah. it I love. He was amazing. So and uh, Martha's mother, I think she's still working. And she's, she's older than him. She's so old. Yeah. And she's the most, the sharpest person ever. I mean, you know, she's sitting there doing the New York Times crossword puzzle every in between. Yeah. yeah. She's, she's just, and he, you know, he was a really smart guy too. I think staying, keeping your mind active, puzzle. Yeah whatever is like yeah keeps you sharp and, and having kids your kids they keep you sharp right yeah that's true <laughs> and uh so so anyways that episode and alex do you remember i don't want to jump so far ahead but no, uh i think you know like how often like how were you fi were we finding i can't say us i have to say you Mm -hmm. Were you and Zach and Louie finding your way in the first season? Or were you, did you, were you looking for any connections? Or I always wonder that, like, mm -hmm. uh, when you stumble upon the right 
you know, when a show clicks, maybe is that it? Maybe when it all clicks for you, mm -hmm. the director, like you go, yes, this is what I want now out of this. Or did it always change for you? Good question. Uh, well, it kind of had a couple. Of <coughs> it had a couple different sweet spots for me. <clears throat> One of which would be the Christine Chip relationship and Dean in general. And then another one would be the France, you know, the episode where Chip yeah. France is like one of my favorites. And so that was a sweet spot. Um, definitely <clears throat> Martha, you know, there's a lot of just fun areas to click into. And when they're all working together is when it's like really its best. Um, you yeah. said to me, mm -hmm. you said to me when we first read, I don't know if we just read the very first script together or read all the scripts for the first season, would that be possible? Where we all got together before we started and we were at yeah. that, we were at the, where the wardrobe was at the offices, I guess, yeah. mm -hmm. the, yeah. fir the first offices or were they always the same offices and I just had it mixed up? No, yeah, and it's where we had the first time. No, no, they were right. slightly different the first. first no, it was season. different. It was in Glendale. Yeah, yeah. So we all sat down, and I think we had lunch, and then read them, or read them, and then had lunch. Anyway, mm -hmm. I don't know if we read them all, but I said to you, you said to me, don't look at it as a 30 minute show. Look at it as a three and a half hour movie hmm. for the first uh, season. And I went, oh, that's a good way to look at it because, you know, it it wasn't sitcom -y. It was more as the rolling hills, you know, hmm. that you could, you know, you'd get running and then you'd have to go up a little hill and then you'd get running again and you'd have to go up a bigger hill hmm. and then you'd go straight down a hill. But hmm. so, you know, I mean, I didn't know all that during it, but I did settle in well and loved going to work so much. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was like a big sponge that kept getting, you know, more and more info. Mm -hmm. And I just had the most uh, wonderful time of my life. And what always helped me, I mean, you, you are a director who doesn't direct per se, like do this, do that. Mm -hmm. You are... I mean, you hardly ever say anything about what's going on, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, just to piggyback off that thing you said to me about the movie, I just want to get this in because it's one of the best, two of the best things I ever heard. I you, I was in the writer's room probably when we were downtown there by uh, Needle Park. Mm -hmm. And um, I said to you, you're up at the board and I'd been there six hours and I thought, I'm glad I'm just a comic. And, um, you know, so I'm not writing all day because it's so much work, really. Mm -hmm. and you have to really put your ego in the middle of the table and then people take a big hammer and hit it. Mm -hmm. And um, I said to you, Jonathan, you're up at the board. And I said, when do you know you were just thinking, you know, mm -hmm. you weren't saying anything. I said, when do you know when a scene is done? And you said this to me. I won't put you on the spot that you remember, it, but you probably do remember it. You said to me, I go, Jonathan, when do you know when a scene is finished? You said at the last possible moment. Mm -hmm. And I just, I, I, I said, oh my God, that makes so much sense to what we're doing. Mm -hmm. There's always room, you know, for jello, so to speak, or there's always room for, there's always room for more stuff. Mm -hmm. There's always room to change anything. Like if in the middle of something you thought, we're doing this all wrong. We've all got to get on our heads and mm -hmm. do it. You, you mm -hmm. would, you'd make that call. Where did you learn that? Did you learn that at Tom Goes to the Mayor with Tim and Eric or Saturday Night Live, or did you learn that on uh, Portlandia? Mm, and definitely at Tim and Eric because there, I, it was, we were so on our own, and there was no buddy checking over anything. And um, so every scene, because that's sketches, so they're not, you're not worried about like, well, what's this gonna do to the scene five scenes later? It's its own self-contained thing. 
you get your cast together, you get your ideas together, you get your costumes together. You have a, you know, there really were no scripts on that show. There were little outlines and ideas and, and, you know, I would come in with a plan, usually kind of based on here's the script. Um, we'd get to whatever location. And then it was like, okay, we're well, now we're starting over again. So we can, right. let, let's hear it. Okay, we hear it. Eh, it's not that good. But we know we got that guy and that and that. And what if we just, now it's this. And you just kept, what was very um, freeing about not having to be accountable <laughs> only to yourself in a way that it has to be good. Um, is that you can just listen to it, hear it, and then say, that doesn't work. You can, it's okay to say, that doesn't work. And it's okay to say, but I hear something that's good. Let's do that good thing. And let's just shape it to what's working and not be hung up on a plan that you came up with three months ago or the night before. It's like, follow it. Because to me, comedy is not a science. It doesn't always work exactly the same way every single time. It's close because you go, oh, that was a funny joke. Two people laughed. I know the science behind it now, but you never exactly do. That's why stand-ups try it, try it, try it, try it. That worked. But it's not like you can go into a lab and just create it. Right. It doesn't work. I mean, you can write things that are funny, and but then it's the performance a little bit this way or a little bit that way makes it funny or not funny. The editing of it, a little bit this way or a little it's it's such a hard thing to get. So be okay with that and just, you're chasing it. You don't know exactly where it is. You try a little bit this way, a little bit this way, a little bit this way. Just keep trying a lot of things. And you know when it's good because you laugh or you think, you know, you know it's funny. So, but it, that's the hard part about comedy is it's not a science. It's just there's nothing scientific really about it. And so you just have to, you know, use your experience to go into it going like, I think I know how to make this work. But then when you get in the middle of it, you just have to test it, which I'm sure you've tried in your stand up is you change the jokes as you fine tune them and work them out in the road. And I mean, the know. best way to be is open to the idea that you don't ex know exactly how the joke is going to go, mm -hmm. but you have to trust yourself to at least try it. Yeah. Sometimes I've worked on a joke for over 10 years to get the punchline right. Wow. Just because I said, one, what else is life about but to figure out how I can make something perfect mm -hmm. for me at least. And so that's what it keeps me engaged. And, um, you know, I just love, I love that. And I do feel like we had a real impromptu improvisational in a large mm -hmm. sense oh yeah uh, li live set at all times like mm -hmm. you know i was always zach is the culprit of all of the beginning of it because he will always try to make me laugh <laughs> he will he will on purpose <laughs> and he just does it in the most serious face <laughs> and i'll go what and he goes nothing or whatever he does and uh but you know <laughs> the absurdity or maybe he just wants to have fun which I think all people in comedy do just want to have fun and mm -hmm. really hate structure. I mm -hmm. think comedian comedy people hate structure. Yeah. You know, why can't, can't you do this? Why can't we? Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that's what Baskets is about. I always say Baskets is ahead of its time, you know, or <laughs> way behind one of the two, <laughs> you know. <Got> <laughs> um, <laughs> Jonathan, what was the biggest disappointment <laughs> or the thing you never quite felt like you got that you wanted to do if there was one and there doesn't have to be one either well you could you could come back to that if you want to. yeah i know there was a, i mean one thing i could think of off the top of my head is uh just like i wanted to do this big sequence in the in the episode the opera episode i wanted to do right. a big sequence where Chip calls France and he calls his friends the clowns and it's them. You see their journey getting to Bakersfield and it was just too expensive and complicated. And 
So it had to go. And I was very bummed out about it at the time. Probably I still am if I think about it. That's why it popped into my head. But that's a small thing. I mean. Yeah. Um, so, but those things always stick it with you forever in life, right? If you're a director. You know, just in the sense of, I'm going to do this someday if I get the money to do it. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So most... what is your biggest joy then? Is it also the opera? Is the show... Is that also your biggest joy, or is there something really small that you feel like you pulled off in the show that maybe not everybody will get it, but you know the the smartest guy in the world will get it or whatever? Yeah. I know that's weird, but our favorite episode that you enjoyed doing from beginning to end, or yeah. or was the most rewarding, or just was the most difficult, and you got it and you threw well, the mic down at the end of it. Well, there's a couple, like definitely the Easter episode from every stage of it was yeah. sort of as good as it gets. And that to me is a very simple one, but it's actually very complex at the same time. I remember in the writer's room, I just go, well, I want to do an episode about Easter. We didn't have any plan for it, how it fit into the season. And Sam Hunter, one of the other writers goes, I love it. I want to make, I want to, that, and once someone corroborates that it's a good idea, you feel like, okay, good. And for some reason, that one was like blessed in a way because it was, you know, sometimes you have a good idea and it kind of like filters out and doesn't quite make it. And that one had no reason to exist at all. But it did, it fit together though. It yeah. fit together. You know, we found it. We just it, it kept, and because <clears throat> really the original idea was just, the family singing hymns together off key. <laughs> and that was enough that was making us really laugh. Just that right. Christine is trying to get her son to church, like a 13 year old. Right. Just, we gotta get to church. We gotta get to church. Right. It's Easter. That was it. And then Sam was really able to like have this big moment and this, but just sitting around that table, remember two days of shooting that table scene. That's, Yes. Best. I love all that's of a great scene, man. Yeah. It's the it's it's so good. And I remember that's a good example of like I think it was towards the end. I think we shot most of it. And I just said, Can you guys just do some chit chat about the Methodists and the Episcopals and everything? And you said, I got it. I got I got this. <laughs> And there was just a little chat with you and Martha's parents <laughs> about different churches. What do you guys do? What do you guys do? It's so real. And it is so small. That's always it my was my favorite. mom. It yeah. was my mom talking about uh, the Episcopalians. It wasn't that. But I can remember her describing a religion and mm -hmm. thinking, what? She described <laughs> it once with the furniture in the churches. <laughs> she said the Catholics have the really good furniture, and then this the Lutherans have all that blonde stuff, all that Norwegian influence stuff, just some uh -huh. weird thing she had made up. Right. And uh, then she would say, and then uh, you know the Latter Day Saints, who knows what they do or <laughs> something. She was really great on that. When she would lie, right? She right. would just go, who knows. That was my mom when she didn't know something. She didn't want to admit it, but she wanted to keep a placeholder in the conversation. But mm -hmm. yeah, that scene was uh, fantastic. Yeah, you know? so good. And then um, that's what I'm talking you, about. To me, that where, where I was talking earlier about like everything hitting on all cylinders because that had the very mundane sort of after brunt after easter brunt which everyone kind of knows and then it also had zach having these kind of flights of fancy of like remembering paris and him dressed up as the clown interwoven yeah. together i mean that was kind of beautiful a, stuff beautiful yeah. stuff. it just worked really 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 nice when he gives me that candy it's that's such good. a beautiful scene yeah. really and then you got the emmy that was our submission that episode yeah where, so that was obviously a good choice because that was very good. Let's let's keep it going. I wish we could submit that again. <laughs> um, <laughs> we submitted the one I really wanted, but somebody pointed out that the scene with my granddaughter is one of the best scenes they ever saw. Oh, in the last season? Yeah. Yeah, that was good. 
they love that. And oh, yeah. um, that was an episode they, that I was trying to get going from season two, but that was yeah. a perfect home for it. Um, my yeah. nephew said that reminds me so much of my grandma, who is my sister. Mm -hmm. So that was really beautiful. I just love that. Mm -hmm. um, did you? When did you know you? Uh, what season did you know there'd be a rodeo, or did you always know eventually there'd be a rodeo? What do you mean? There was always well, a rodeo. What do you mean? The rodeo from the very first season. Yeah. Well, he works yeah. at the rodeo. Yeah. Oh yeah, he works at the rodeo. But when did you get the idea that that I would buy it? Well, that was season two, um, but it was just a, the ending of season two. But that just seemed like the, the right ultimate, thing. Well, it just seemed like the ultimate, like mom's always meddling and trying to fix everything. So she, here she is, she's going to buy this. If that's what your dream is, I'll buy it. <laughs> so. so, So did you think... <clears throat> What do you think Christy was trying to do the whole time? Just be a mom or make up for the death of the father? Or do you have any kind of, you know, just trying to like, she was a mess, but a really organized, not a organized, but she was a, she just kept trying things. Yeah, I think she, she didn't, yeah, she definitely felt, like these kids went through a little traumatic time, so they're always going to need me. They're never going to kind of launch fully on their own, and that's just part of the nature of the bad hand they've been dealt. Um, and also just not 100% encouraging their stupid dreams, um, slightly undermining them. Um, you know, when did you think? <clears throat> when did you think it would? How long did you think it would go on? Did you have any idea in your no. head when you? Okay. Because when you're doing one season, that's as far as you think. You know, that's as far as you think, right? Yeah. I mean, unless it's like some that's, crime drama, maybe you think. Yeah. Towards the future, but right. Um, and how long did it take you guys? To write that many all the episodes did it take you six months no or more or no three it, months? even less um oh, okay you I have guess. so many great writers yeah but you're a very much of a steward in the writing room mm -hmm. like everything flows through you am i right mm -hmm. yeah which is right and zach too right and zach also yeah, yeah. Or like, more from you. More from me on the day to day, but it has to make sense to him, you know. And yeah, uh, uh, you know, because his thing that he said to us was, "Just make it make sense emotionally. I can make anything funny." So nice. that was that was important to him because I think maybe he had done a lot of stuff where it's like kind of wacky and doesn't really make any sense. And then as an actor or performer, it's very hard to play. When you're trying to yeah. hustle up some fake plot, that then you're like, well, I can't bring anything else to this because I just have to hustle this plot that doesn't really make sense. When it's real and you can just say, yeah, I know how I would react, then you can add jokes into it because there's more of a reality to bounce off of. You need reality in comedy to to have people rolling their eyes or looking confused at that there's a real world that it, not everything can be crazy certain things have to be normal so that the, the funny things can stand out. If everything's funny, it's not funny. So you said to me, I asked you to explain baskets once, and you said to me, think of it as a slapstick, think of it as a slapstick drama. Yes, that's exactly and right. And I, I just love that. Uh, yeah. I love that quote. I love that idea. And, um, I think we did th when we did three seasons, we were humming along, I felt. And then we had a big break because of a movie, I think, or you were doing something too, or mm -hmm. a bunch of stuff, right? Yeah. So, yeah, that was a big break, yeah. 
So when we got back to season four, did you think this is our last season or did you know or did you hear that? Or was that not necessarily right on the money? Well, I knew it possibly was going to be. I can't remember exactly when I knew it was going to be, but Mm -hmm. I knew it was on the table. And I think we were writing knowing that it might be, so we were coming up with a verbal plot that could be a nice ending to... Mm -hmm. I think you said to me about season four. Do you remember what you said to me about season four? Or was it three where you said to me, I just want Christine to be happy. (laughs) Do you remember that? I think that was at season three. What was Lori Grenier in? That I think was three, Three, right? I think you said to me, I just want Christine to be happy. Right. That was three. Um, you know, you you wanted me to be happy, you know. Mm-hmm. One of my favorite scenes is running down the hall after Martha, even though we didn't necessarily use the exact, just me yelling out Martha <laughs> was one of my favorite things because I really felt maybe the joy of my mom, mm-hmm. you know, just found, you know, a necklace for a dollar somewhere. Mm-hmm. And she's going to tell Martha about it because I made for me, I made Martha like my mom's best friend. My mm-hmm. mom had a best friend mm-hmm. that she could, uh, I'm sure, completely dominate, but yet get something from and they back and forth. I think they were both women who appreciated each other. And so, uh, anyways, that scene. And then season four was such a beautiful season. What do you describe season four as? What is in your mind like? Like, and I look at it, I go, this is a, a most beautiful crescendo or a most beautiful, not per, like, like you really were with, I was on a journey mm-hmm. in season four. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, but, I mean, it's so beautiful. Yeah, and it kind of comes back to that when the train is coming in, it's like, do you need cowboys anymore? Or it's like the future is coming. Everything's going to be faster and slicker now. And and here's this family who's in the way of the train, and they got to kind of see if they're even going to survive this next big evolutionary thing. Are they the fittest to survive? Maybe not. You know, maybe they're just kind of a, you know, they don't like the clowns don't really, nobody likes clowns anymore. Um, yeah, they, they vilified them for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, there was sort of a po- poetry to that and having that scene with the granddaughter in the antique store and saying, I love that scene. yeah, are we just going to end up with a bunch of pictures in the antique store that we don't even have anyone that, held on to them so um i think i te- i say please do me a favor don't take you know keep the pictures don't don't mm-hmm. i say that to her mm-hmm. you know jonathan people really miss christine and miss baskets a lot mm-hmm. but i get the thing where they miss christine mm-hmm. so i came up with this idea i'm gonna pitch you season five mm-hmm I moved back to Denver and the pandemic starts Mm -hmm. and we live through it. Mm -hmm. And one by one, the characters have to return and all find themselves Mm -hmm. through this really big pandemic. Mm -hmm. And it ends with all of us marching out there Mm -hmm. and protesting Mm -hmm. with me on a scooter. (laughs) Uh, all de- all decked out with Black Lives Matter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, just, you know, because that would be, you know, can we talk about the interracial uh, mm-hmm. relationship? Like, mm-hmm. how did you come up with the idea it would be a black person? I, I don't even know. I It just felt right to me for some reason. I don't know why. And then when I saw Alex come in and do it, I was like, well, yeah. He was just so good. He was so good. I mean, he was color. He was colorless too. 
Yeah. He was not any, like, he was just the best guy of yeah. the group. Yeah. He didn't have to go black or white on that. Yeah. But he was just like, oh, my God, he, he, was, he was born to do this part. I know. He was you so know? Good. He was so good. I remember I was with you. We were in the, we were reading. They were, I was reading with the, the guys. We had mm-hmm. some famous people come in that were well known on TV and they all read great, mm-hmm. you know. But when Alex came in, I started ad libbing with them mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. playing around. And then you and I were just like, couldn't wait for him to get out of the room to turn to each other and go, that's him. Yeah. I think you said it to me. We got him or something like that. Mm-hmm. I can't remember. And he, he was so good that he felt fell right into the certain people. Family. Are, to the family, like, really. The family and, but into your style. You know, like he wouldn't be thrown like, oh my God, what is Louis saying? It's not in the script. It's like, he would stay right with it. Yeah. He was a, 100%, he's a great actor. Yeah. Really, really good. And, a great, and maybe a greater person. I don't know. I mean, he's just so great. He's just so lovely as a person too. Yeah, what a great scene partner to make the scenes better with you, especially. You know, he put up with me uh, no matter what the dilemma was, and no matter how mad I got. That's true. When he picked out a bedspread that he thought would look good on me, and <laughs> I got mad, and yeah. all those things. That scene where I'm just pulling out all those dresses. Yeah, that was hilarious. And talking to him on Skype, I really feel like we made Skype work mm-hmm. on TV. I feel like it really played. Yeah, that was real. You know, when I'm there and I get a call, mm-hmm. I got to go back. Mm-hmm. To, you know, screwed up again. And mm-hmm. uh, oh, my mom was it. My mom died. Was it my mom died there? Yeah, there's that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then when but he God, got there's just how about the mom character? Was she the greatest? She was, yeah, love her. So great to have a skinny mom and a fat girl. Yeah. You know, her fat daughter who she wants her to be skinny, but mostly she does want her to be happy. Yeah. But she thinks she's got to scold her or do whatever. And for that parallel of her having an alcoholic father and me having an alcoholic father and the mother being the same, was really beautiful, you know, mm-hmm. it was really, really a gorgeous situation. I really appreciate you doing this. Any yeah. last words about baskets? If no. they came to you and said, we want to do a new, want to do one more scene of baskets, would you go and do it? Of course. Oh, good. Baskets was well, definitely, definitely one of the highlights and just a joy to be there every day and just loving everyone involved and you know just so fun to make and yes definitely i would do more maybe this will warm somebody's hearts and they'll go we gotta have one more year (laughs) and even if they don't i can't wait until i can see you in person and we can all talk and hug and eat jonathan yeah i just want to say thank you so much oh yeah for for really changing my life and adding to it and uh, giving the world Christine baskets because I could have given them a version of it, but you really helped me give them the very best version of that person and that character. And I love you for that and love you for every interaction I've ever had with you. You've only been mad at me a couple of times and (laughs) I think you've really given up on those things. So I don't hold them against you, but um, I loved working with you. I thank you for four wonderful seasons and I hope I get to see you soon and yeah. all my love to you and your family. Tell your mom and dad I said hi. I will. Okay? All right. All right. Thank love you, Jonathan. Okay, Thank you so much. Okay. All right, bye. Bye.